Hey, I'm Carlos Lago, and up next is a free episode from my show, which airs every weekday exclusively on Motor Trend On Demand. The show is called Daily Fix, and it's about going deeper into the personalities and cars behind this brand and this website and the magazines and all that stuff. The conversations are more casual. We're a little bit more uh, less. We're, we're a little bit less rigid with everything that we do because. I want to see what happens and show you what happens when the cameras get turned off on the big high dollar production value shows that we do here. If you like what you see, go subscribe to at MotorTrendOnDemand.com for a free 30 day trial. If not, that's cool. I won't be offended at all. I'll be offended. Really be offended. This is International Man of Mystery. That's not right. Oh, well, that'll do. <laughs> to International Bureau Chief, Angus McKenzie. We're in a Ford Focus RS, and Angus is going to demonstrate to me uh, and explain his, I'd say, let's say contrary opinions on this car than, like, the bulk of media, let's say. Is that fair? Well, I am an old contrarian, so <laughs> I suppose I'm only living up to my <laughs> reputation. I wonder at what point do you become... The old contrarian. Like, is there like a line you cross? Is it more of a gradual thing that you move into? Is it like a slider? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I can't remember waking up one day and thinking, suddenly I'm old, so I'll be contrary about it. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe it does creep up on you. It does. It's just one day. Like, maybe these, I was a young kids. contrarian one day. Yeah, young you know, back in the day, maybe I was a young contrarian. And you were just fine, yeah. yeah. Well, you think it would flip the other way. You'd be a young contrarian, and then as you got older, you'd be like embracing like Snapchat. Which is not even the thing anymore. Snapchat, yeah. yeah. Isn't that Jump the Shark? Isn't I, like, what, now isn't Instagram's that like doing Meerkat it. or whatever that other... I am deciding I'm going to give up trying to follow the new thing. Well, I'm run out of little button thingies on yeah. that iphone thing. There's, there's multiple. Is there? Yeah. Now you tell me. <laughs> you mean there's more than one? <laughs> you, can, you just swipe. Oh, because I was getting rid of buttons because my screen was filling up. I like that. That's good. Really? That's good. That's real good. I never knew. I should hang around young people more often, you know. Because I learned so much about the world. Gee golly, right? Okay, here we're, we are. We're on the winding track at Honey Proving Grounds because this is Motor Trends Car of the Year. We're doing testing right now. Yep. And this, oh, I'll give the uh, order or the announcement that we're heading out on the winding track. Yep. Ford Focus RS on winding track, shooting video. And let's do it. Okay, so I've switched it into. Uh, track mode. Okay. There's a health, helpful little check the flag has appeared up on the screen. That's how you know. That's the universal indicator of and, track. And a, a damper with an S bar, which so means got, it's you've got more than one. Stiff. So all right, into the first corner. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, there's lots of grip in this car, and the, you know those cup tires help over the top here on the brakes in third gear into the corner, pitch it in. And yeah, you can get the car to rotate, but we're doing this all the time. This is, this is, this feels like turbulence. Front wheels are off the ground over that little bump there, you know, and it's like, really? You can't go very fast if you haven't got any traction. But if the tires are in the air, isn't that a good thing? No. You don't like jumping cars? No, it slows you down. So we're pitching in here now. Again, you know, this corner, I don't know. Well, in most cars, you can go through here at 100 miles an hour. We're just above 100 miles an hour. I haven't stopped jiggling since we started. No, and but it's really, we're moving That's across the road. We're kind of skipping across the road. Yeah. And this is a perfectly flat surface. This is not no, a yeah. rough surface by any yeah. means. This is really flat. So I wonder what's creating those those vertical motions. It's nice though, you can lift off. I mean, the basic the fundamentals of the chassis aren't bad. Like, yeah. come in here, just lift off, tucks it in, yeah. get back on the gas again. You can feel, you can feel the rear end really pushing you out of the corner. So it's nice, it's just this. I feel like I'm in, you know, spin dry cycle. Coming up for the little, the little flick flack here, in. No, it's, it's, but it's it's fairly benign. I just wish I just wish it didn't bounce up and down That's all the, the time. So okay, bouncy stuff aside, it's doing the stuff you want an all-wheel drive car to do. Yeah, it, it does. The fundamentals are there. I would like a little more throttle response. It just seems a little bit doughy. Yeah. Um, and 
the, the trans the, the shift gate is very you know long Little, and, yeah. and floppy. Um, it can't hide its economy car roots. You no, know? it can't. Like, it can't. That's it. Starts the day as a Focus. It ends the day as a Focus RS, but it's still the Focus, right? Now, I want to try something different here. I'm going to switch into. You're going to go into drift mode. Into drift mode. I'm bracing. No, but I couldn't find how this made any. Well, you can't drift on these tires. There's just too much grip with these tires. I played around with it. Yeah. I don't know. I couldn't seem to make it do much at all. From my experience on the figure eight, which is the only time I've ever drove in this, driven this other than what we're doing now, the tires seem to have more grip than a drift, any kind of drifting in this car would allow. Yeah. Even when you have seen people drift in this car, it's not drifting. No. It's, it initiates oversteer in a way that's more like a, uh, uh, donut mode or yeah. more mode more appropriate for donuts. The, it doesn't seem to change the handling balance significantly. So this is the second gear. This is a perfect opportunity. So you can... But you can see there's too much grip mm -hmm. with the tires and so the thing just gets this sort of... gets the, the, the back comes around but it can't do anything with it and then it, the, it sort of gives up and then yeah, the front goes... starts pushing, right? Yeah, and you, we're getting that horrible, chattery, stuttery... It's, it's just an exercise in futility. You feel the rear step out, but then the front starts crabbing you sideways yeah. along. So you, you still understeer into the dirt. You just do it with the side instead of the you front. You do it with much more graceful elegance. Right? You don't look like you've gone, oh my god. But with loose you're going off sideways with the graceful. So this car is graceful then. No, it's it's not. My problem is it's not. It doesn't feel as sophisticated as some other high-performance cars in this class now. You know, like okay. So what are the other options? Golf R. Golf R, but Golf R is not anywhere near as entertaining as yes, this. Yes, it doesn't do right, any you of that. You can't do that. Yeah. Now we are in drift mode. Right? Yes. Now what I'm no what you notice is we're not bouncing up and down as much. That is true. Yeah. And so I like this thing in drift mode, That's even though it won't drift. The question is, is, of course, how long can you actually drive like this in drift mode before the clutches say, nope, we're, we're done? What do you mean? So... Am I not supposed to be doing this? Yeah. I mean, if the car allows you to do that, by all means, do it. Right. But... Am I going to blow something up? I think I would hope that the systems in the car would prevent that from happening. Right. You know, I've seen Scuttlebutt online saying you can drive like that hard on track day for a very short time amount of time before things start overheating. Right. Well, that's a problem for me. Right, again, if I'm going to have a performance car, it, it needs to be able to do what you want it to do when you want it to do it without having to press a button and then without having to be all precious about, oh my God, I can't stand the, the pressure anymore. See, it's... That's, that's yeah. It was trying to drift. Yeah. If it, this had been on street tires, we probably could have got around there. I'd better take the button out before I blow it up. <laughs> God, thank God you told me. I wonder why the difference, though, between track and drift removes those vertical bounces. Well, maybe to get the drift happening, you need more weight transfer yeah. to the rear axle. I mean, um, the track mode's just too stiff, I think. And this yeah. is a smooth This is a smooth surface. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, woe betide you if you're going to try and drive it in track mode on anything like a normal road. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's stiff enough in, in regular, in the regular setup. Mm -hmm. I just think they've kind of overdone it. Well, it is an RS. So yeah. it's, it's more R because it's RS. So that, that is overdone. I mean, that is like, hey, I want the overdone model, right? Look, setting up any car is in, and the suspension on any car is a, is a black R. Yes. Yeah. I think there's something, you know, I wonder what the suspension setup was optimized for, which tire. I yeah. suspect it's not these cup tires. And the cup tires will give you huge lateral G numbers, mm -hmm. but as we're seeing in this case, the chassis just can't make the, the most of it. You need, you know, you're, you're wanting more weight to get on the tire yeah. to work the tire harder, but all that's happening is that the thing's skipping and juddering. You want to be on the other side of that traction fall off part yeah. of the tire's yeah. graph, right? You yeah. want to be on that side more in these have so, the graph is so much higher because they have yeah, so much more grip. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, this thing would probably be a lot more fun on you know uh, a regular tire, more yeah. regular tire. I bet. Um, all through here. Or here's what we do: we keep the cups on the front tire and put the regular tires on the rear. Yeah, that would be entertaining. Yeah, that nothing would... like uncontrollable oversteer. Well, I grew up driving 
rear wheel drive rally cars. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, and in my day, rear wheel drive meant the back wheels, the proper wheels. Yeah. Right? So uh, that would probably take me back to my old Datsun P510. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Angus. I think, that's, I, think that's a, I think that's a good episode right there. I think that's real good. I, I, I appreciate that we have a, a, uh, a contrarian opinion. That Okay, here's the thing. People talk about, well, you know, it overheats. I can't, is there any good of a tra- added, added racetrack? Okay, why are you expecting race car performance out of a, ha- a hatchback with all-wheel drive? Is that a reasonable ex- expectation? It, it's the expectation maybe that Ford set up. Sure. Okay, so if you can't deliver or if you have struggled to deliver, yeah. maybe you shouldn't set up the expectation. You know, the RS is, is a hot hatch. Back in the day, the RS moniker in Fords, and it started, um, you know, with Ford Escorts back in the day, they were the sportiest ones you could get. Mm-hmm. It didn't necessarily say that it was a race car. Okay. Um, it just said that was the sporty one. And in fact, the RS... Now the RS2000 made its bones, uh, Ford Escort RS2000 made its bones as a rally car mm-hmm. on the dirt. Uh, it wasn't a track car at all. Um, they did race them on the track, modified, but it was, you know, it simply said this was the hottest you could buy. Yeah. And I think that's a fair enough, uh, fair enough, you know, proposition to take forward. I, I don't think you should think that this is you know, a track optimized car because I don't think it is at the moment. Yeah, I think, you know, you got sport and then you got really sport. But then if you want something that's actually built for limit performance, look at physics, rear drive, front engine or mid engine. And at this price range, that does open up to Mustang Camaro, which nowadays are really good, right? Well, you know, you you, you wonder how much difference there would be uh, around here in a 1LE uh, Camaro versus this. Yeah, and I think we both know. I kind of wish we had one here. <laughs> I think we both know which one we'd enjoy driving more. I agree. <laughs> I, we'll leave it there. Thank you. Thanks for watching this quick drive. Watch for more on Motor Trend On Demand. Email us at dailyfix at motortrend.com. See you next time. Bye. Here's what you missed last week on Daily Fix, exclusively on Motor Trend On Demand. Volvo S90. In 1959, they invented the shoulder belt. In a corner, going 121 miles an hour. Or we go like normal human freeway speeds. 90. Ford Focus RS. This has like way more power than you'd ever expect. I would like a little more throttle response. It just seems a little bit doughy. I haven't stopped jiggling since we started. I'm Carlos Lago, and if you didn't watch last week's Daily Fix, you should do that now. It's exclusive on Motor Trend On Demand.